Today, I want to show you something that I really, really wish someone showed me when I was starting out with music production. If you know my story, I spent so many years trying to learn music production to no avail, and then I stumbled across this article, The Five Stages of an Electronic Music Producer. This was written by our founder, Sam, at the time, and I didn't really know what EDM prod was, but I clicked on it, and it really highlighted exactly what I was struggling with. And it went through the five different stages, which are initiation, exponential learning, the dip, proficiency, and mastery. So today I wanted to make a video on how helpful this was to me, and I wanna be able to share it with a few of you guys who will really find it helpful as well. Each of you watching this video will fit into a different stage here, so make sure you watch the full video so you can really understand exactly where you are and where you're headed. Stage one, initiation. This tends to last around two to four months. This is the point where you've started to figure out that music production is a thing. And it turns out you actually don't need much gear for it. You can actually just do it with a pair of headphones and what you've already got. You've probably seen your favorite artists like Dead Mouse, Marshmallow or Skrillex making music on their computer, whether it's just in a studio or in their fancy modular rack laden palace. But let's be honest, your music probably sounds something like this. And there are basically three really key things that you do during this initiation stage that kind of set you up for the rest of your uh, you know, progress as a producer. The first thing is you choose a DAW. Now, obviously I got Ableton open here. Ableton is the door I ended up choosing. Spend time playing around with a bunch of different ones that you think will be suitable for you. Watch a few tutorials, get a course or so uh, to see which one works for you and then commit. What I did was I started on like Reason, then FL Studio, and then Cubase for a bit, and then Ableton, then FL Studio again, then back to Ableton. And what that did was just confuse me. So I should have just picked one, which I should have picked Ableton from the beginning, and just committed to it so that I wouldn't have to chop and change so much over time. The second thing you need to be okay with during this initiation stage is the fact that, yep, your music's not going to be as good as you want it to be because you're literally just starting out. So just experiment and see what happens, you know, play with knobs, drag sounds in, just get familiar and comfortable with your environment, even if it doesn't lead to making great music. I really can't stress how important this is because it's a lot of fun if you just expect nothing and just kind of just mess around, you know. And the third thing you can do during this initiation stage, which is a really good thing to start doing as early as possible, is to create your first song. Now, like I said, it's going to sound trash. It's going to sound really bad because you haven't got all these skills yet. But that's not the point. The point here is that you're developing the habit of finishing early on because what most producers do is they think that they have to wait for the perfect song to be made before it's worth finishing. But they don't realize that actually those good songs come from finishing a lot of bad music and getting through the crap to get to the gold. And the last thing that's really, really important here I just wanted to mention is you're developing your mindset early on. Everything you do as a producer is going to set you up for how you um, act later down the track. So it's important that you become process oriented and not just focused on making one really banging song and then that's going to launch your career and you're going to be popping champagne bottles. No, the important thing here is that you just enjoy the process. So I'm going to leave a link for our free masterclass for new producers down below, which I seriously think is 100% recommended viewing for everyone who's starting out in this world. Okay, so stage two, exponential learning. This normally takes six to 24 months, so up to two years. By now you've learned a bunch of music production concepts and you've been watching tutorials, taking courses, learning at such a rapid pace because the information is just flowing in and you're just trying out a bunch of stuff. You know things like EQ, compression, dynamic, saturation, minor chords, arrangement, ADSR, serum, intervals, layering. These are all no longer these mysterious concepts and you're finally starting to grasp what all these weird terms that producers use actually mean. And one of the most important things you need to do in this exponential learning phase is focus on the fundamentals of music production. Now, the fundamentals are one of these things that never really stop being important. And I didn't realize this early on. You need to be able to focus on just making good music and doing whatever is necessary to get there. And don't worry about things like sound design or advanced mixing or, you know, using jazz harmonic chords in your songs when you can't do things like pull in a kick and bass line together and get them sounding good or, you know, 
just pull in five elements to make a basic song. If you can't be doing those things, you can't be. You, if you're not arranging songs and just making a build and drop and doing those basic things, then none of this other stuff is really going to matter at the end of the day. What really matters is your ability to bring sound together in an organized way to make music. That's what producers do. The second thing you need to do now that you've finished your first song and you've gone through the initiation stage is that you need to finish a lot of music. And when I say a lot of music, I mean like I would seriously, if you can, aim to finish one song a week. Now, when I was starting out, that seemed like an impossible goal. But the only reason it was impossible because my expectations of what a finished song were would be so far off what I was actually capable of achieving that I never felt like I could do it. But now that you know at this point is not to make world-class music, but it's to make something, you can keep finishing songs and you'll notice that each song you create and finish, you, you start the idea, you develop it and you finish it, you progress all of your skills together. The problem is if you just start a bunch of songs and abandon them, which everyone abandons songs, of course, but you don't learn those skills like arranging, mixing, uh, finalizing, those little decisions at the end that takes from 80 to 100%. You don't learn that if you don't finish. So finishing a lot and rapidly is super important in the exponential learning phase. The third thing you can do here is just branch out and diversify. You want to take that experimental, playful mindset that you had in the initiation stage and focus that on different genres, different styles, different production methods. You know, if you're used to using synths, try sampling or vice versa. If you're a drum and bass producer, try making dubstep or trap. If you're a house producer, try making techno, try making pop. Just have fun here and try out a bunch of things because this is really where your sound is going to start to be developed because you know what you can do and what you like as a producer and you can start to channel that into a more specific form later down the track. And the last thing that's really important here as you start to improve as a producer is that you're getting feedback and you're developing relationships with other producers and people in the industry. Feedback is invaluable and the earlier you can start getting it, is just going to make your life so much easier. One, you need to actually start being open to feedback because I know a lot of artists, myself included, can become quite sensitive to the feedback of others. But it's important that you open yourself up to criticism that's constructive and implement that in your music. And two, you need to actively seek it out because not everybody is just going to be willing to give you feedback. You have to develop friendships and relationships that actually encourage you to make better music and the really the best way to do it is to find a community online you know we've got our edm prod mastermind community for all of people who bought our courses which is a great place we do feedback streams there once a month but if you can't do that even just finding a small group of people in your genre you can find them on reddit on soundcloud on on spotify and send them a message or an email and just make sure they're at kind of a similar level to you and start getting feedback from these people because they will really help you level up. Now, these things are actually all covered inside our EDM Foundations course, which is great. We focus on finishing music regularly, on branching out and diversifying by trying different genres and learning the fundamentals associated with them and gathering feedback and building relationships because you're doing it in a community with other people who are also trying to level up. So if you want to learn about EDM Foundations and really nail those fundamentals I was mentioning of music production, check it out because we've had over 5,000 people sign up. It's one of our most popular courses yet and we really do believe that this is one of the best things you can do as a new producer if you want to get yourself on that right trajectory. Okay, stage three, the dip. This lasts normally about six to 18 months. (sighs) Oh man. I remember when I went through the dip and it was probably one of the hardest times for my music production. And I don't just say that because it kind of magically aligns with this, you know, preconceived concept. It genuinely probably lasted a bit longer than 18 months for me. It was because I just had so many mindset issues around production that I wasn't getting better. I wasn't making music and I kind of just uh, wandered off into nothing. I hardly made music. I like to call this stage the producer graveyard because actually so many people give up and I nearly did. And this is what your music sounds like during this stage. Nothing, because you're too discouraged to be making it. So what gives? Why does this little dip happen? It, it feels like we're heading on this really good upward trajectory, but then all of a sudden, you know, 
it stops feeling like you're heading upwards. It feels like you just spiral downwards and you feel self-doubt. You feel like you're not going to ever make it as a producer. And it's really, really discouraging. So overcoming the dip is all about mindset development. The first thing you need to learn during this stage is to deal with overwhelm. It can be easy to feel like everything is too much. You know, the pressure to start releasing music or to be finishing music is too much. You've learned a lot, but you're not quite at the stage of your uh, peers or your friends or the people you look up to yet. The real key here, though, if you are feeling overwhelmed, is to break things down into smaller pieces. You might have to improve your songwriting, sound design, mixing, mastering, arrangements, but break each one down into a smaller piece that you can focus on, get really good at, and then move on to the next one. Doing this will actually allow you to grow rather than freaking out about not being good enough yet. The second thing you need to do during a dip is to remind yourself of why you started in the first place. And this is just as simple as asking the question, did I start this to make the best song ever? Did I start this to have a hobby and enjoy it? Did I start this so I would have a career in music? Because that purpose will guide you and drive you to get through this dip. And if you don't have it, it will be very hard for you to stay motivated to continue to make music. The third thing here is to be consistent and patient despite how you feel. (laughs) And this is controversial, but uh, you know, you do feel discouraged to make music, but just doing that little bit every day, even if it's the bare minimum, will really keep you riding these waves of up and down emotions during this stage. Even if it's just an hour of sound design or an hour of just messing around in Ableton or FL Studio and seeing what happens. The point here is just to keep consistent and Even if you're making a lot of crap in the meantime and you're not feeling inspired, you're still building those skills and you're still kind of continuing off the exponential learning phase so that when you come out of it, which we'll cover next, you're not left not knowing what to do. And if you're feeling like you're part of the dip right now, just leave a comment below, dip gang, right? Dip gang, dip gang. All right, stage four, proficiency, lasting about two to five years. Like if you see a producer who's blowing up, they're normally at the proficiency stage because they're now good. They, they've they overcome the dip. They've got their confidence back and they're starting to make a lot of really good quality music. There is a bit of an overlap between this one and the dip because it just kind of slowly morphs into this time where you're like, oh, actually, I'm okay. I'm actually good. I'm going to get better. Yeah. And then you slowly start to head upwards. But now in this stage, your progress is going to skyrocket. You're going to figure out what works and what doesn't for what you want to make as a producer. You're going to figure out how to work with others and build your skill set. And you're going to find out exactly what you want to do as an electronic music producer. And I like this stage because your music actually kind of starts to sound good. It's like, oh, I actually want to listen to my music. I actually think that like I would put this in a playlist or I would play this in a DJ set or I would actually, you know, just hear this on the radio and be like, damn, I want to listen or download or stream this song, whatever kids do these days. And the more you finish music during this stage, the more you notice your improvements between songs. They're actually noticeable, especially if you go compare to your earlier stuff. It's just crazy, man. Now, I just want to clarify, at this point, you're not a master of the craft yet. You're not a Tiesto or a Skrillex or a Dead Mouse. You are still kind of growing, but you're just at the point where a career is actually viable now. You know, you can release music and people enjoy it and you can start to build a fan base. So the three things you can do here to really nail the proficiency stage is firstly, look at what the pros are doing and emulate it in your own way. Now, this can come through the process of recreating tracks, but also using others as reference tracks and seeing what techniques work for them and then replicating that in your own music in your own unique way so that you can actually see what makes a song professional, what makes a song good, what makes it catchy, what makes it enjoyable for people to listen or dance to. The second thing you can do is collaborate more. Work with vocalists who can add that top line or work with another producer who's got a slightly different skill set to you and maybe can add something to your music that it didn't have before. This is really good because you can find complementary strengths. If they're a really good sound designer, maybe you're a really good composer. The two can work really well together in harmony. And lastly, number three, you decide what kind of music career you want. You've got a lot more clarity because you've been through the hard time and now you can decide if you want to be a full-time artist, a part-time artist, if you'd rather just continue as a hobby, if you want to be a studio engineer, maybe a mixing and mastering engineer, if you want to be a sound designer or preset pack creator. 
There are a whole bunch of different options. And by now, you'll start to realize what you enjoy as a producer, not what someone else enjoys, not what I enjoy. Just do what you want because that's really what music production is all about. If you think you want to be a proficient producer, like the video. And because if you don't keep and you keep scrolling, like bad things will happen. Okay, I want to cover the last one, which is stage five, mastery. This one lasts forever. This one never ends because not everyone gets here, but the people who do are known as the masters of the craft. These are the EDM producers like Noisier, BT, Dead Mouse. People who are just insanely talented producers, Cohen Sound, I'd probably say fits into this category. Like they just have such technical but also musical ability that people look up to them who are producers and just say like they can just do stuff that no one else can. It not necessarily even in career achievements, but just in your ability to be a good producer. You can make music that no one else is. This is where you start to take things to the next level. You start to come up with your own ways of working. You start to contribute to the furtherance of the art of music production. And your music probably sounds like, I don't know, like I, I probably wouldn't consider myself that high of a master yet. I've still got a long way to go, but really good. <laughs> so there's three things that a master will do based on my observations of what the masters do. And the first thing is deep experimentation. The masters have done all the stuff that's come before them. They know how it works. So it's time for them to come up with truly unique things. So this will be things like really diving into sound design or you know, combining different parts of music in completely new ways and just really diving down the rabbit hole of experimentation to come up with things out the other side. And that can sometimes involve a lot of crap, kind of like the early days in some ways, right? You're just going through new things and figuring out what works and what doesn't. But eventually you come out the other side with something awesome. Second thing you will do is combine disciplines. You'll you'll branch out and you'll bring things like programming into your music or visual arts or you know, film scoring, live performance, things like that, that take music production and put it into a slightly different context. You see this with people like Richard Devine or Tycho, who loves to incorporate visual art uh, and really good live performances like Beardy Man and those people who just do crazy stuff. And the last thing you do at the mastery stage is you become a leader. You start teaching what you know to other people and you, as I said, further the art of music production. Because people need to hear what you need to know. People need to hear the fact that you can do this thing that no one else has done before. And that's what people really want. We need more masters of the art of music production. And there is no next step. You know, you just keep on becoming more and more of a master. And teaching is a great way to keep learning and to keep yourself sharp and to give back to the community for all of the stuff that you have learned. Something that as I try to approach this this phase of mastery as a producer. That's something I want to do more and more with my work here at EDM Prod and beyond. And now I've gone through these five stages and it can seem a bit overwhelming, but hopefully you know kind of where you fit. Maybe you're in the dip, like I mentioned earlier. Maybe you're in the initiation stage and you're just starting out and you're watching this video and be like, Aiden, I have no idea what you're talking about. The point is to know where you are and to see where you've got to go and to prepare yourself in the best way. If this video was helpful, Make sure to subscribe because we do videos like this most weeks, uh, whether it's more like mindset and creativity, stuff like this, or more practical tutorials. And if you found this really helpful, share this with another producer who's in the dip or initiating and still figuring everything out because hopefully they find this helpful. That's been it for today. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, you can check out the full original article below and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.